Hey guys, welcome back to Perplexy and today we are going to discuss about this amazing Gmail productivity tool which is called Boomerang. So the first thing that we are going to learn over here is how do we actually install Boomerang, the extension onto your Gmail and further on we'll be looking at six methods through which we can actually use Boomerang to increase our Gmail productivity. So I hope you guys are excited. Let's look at how do we install Boomerang on our Gmail. So you just go on to Google, type Boomerang for Gmail, right? And then you just need to click on add this to your Gmail. So once you do that, as you can see, this is an extension. What you need to do is add to Chrome. Now you need to remember that Boomerang will work with Gmail, but it only works on Chrome. It may not work on any other browser like Safari or Firefox or something like that. So it will only work on Chrome because remember it's a Chrome extension. So you just click on add to Chrome and then it will give you this pop up. Just click on add extension. Now, once you have installed Boomerang, there will be some noticeable differences that you can see on your email. So if you see on the left hand side, you can see the pause inbox option. On the top right hand corner, you can see the Boomerang symbol. And obviously on the bottom of any email that you compose, you can see these options such as send later, remind me, track me and and boomerang respondable so we will be looking at all of these options and seeing that how these can help us to increase our productivity so the first thing that we're going to look here is how to schedule emails now scheduling emails is one of the most easiest things that is already available as a feature on gmail so what you can do is you can just click over here on the small drop down option it shows schedule send you can pick any date and time and schedule send that's it now the same feature is also available on boomerang you just click on send later and then it will give you a few options in one hour in two hours or probably in a few weeks time whatever is your preferred option you can choose that or you can also pick your own date and time right there is another feature available where you can add your own customized option so for example tomorrow 8 a.m or something of that sort right and then you can update the menu so something like a favorite option that you want to add now the next and i feel the most amazing feature that boomerang has is this feature to send recurring emails let's assume that you're a project manager and you want to see the weekly progress report your team members are very busy they really don't get enough time to probably say jot down an email for you to give you a progress report every week well what can you do sitting and typing the same email stating that okay guys send me the progress report every week can get annoying if the project is very long so one of the best methods that i feel that you know a project manager or anyone who generally has to communicate the same message over a long period of time can use this option of sending recurring messages so what can be done is just click on send later schedule a recurring message so write down your email click on send later schedule recurring messages so once you click on schedule recurring messages you will get this window on your screen what you're supposed to basically do is then fill in these details so when do you want to start the messages to be sent out at what time what date how many times does it have to repeat let's say once a week once a month you know when should the recurrence end so on and so forth and then you schedule and you would see the magic that every single week you will be sending this email to your project team members to get project status updates from them with instant messaging technology today available in our hands one of the most annoying or frustrating things that we have observed is whether people have actually read our emails or no well don't worry with boomerang this option has been provided what you just need to do is before sending your email click on track as soon as you click on track it says over there you can see over here a small disclaimer has been added for the receiver it says the sender has requested a read receipt if you do not wish to provide one click here obviously the receiver does have the option but in many cases receivers generally don't tend to see that they many a times they just skip it in this case you will obviously get a notification basically an email in response when the receiver opens this another astonishing feature about boomerang 
is that it can remind you about the email that you sent so let's say for example i have sent out this email now i need a reminder whether you know sam has opened the email or whether he has clicked on the email or he has not open the email regardless of anything if i need a reminder whatsoever may be the case boomerang has that feature so what you need to do is just go and click on remind me you can select a certain date or time and once you have selected a certain date or time let's say for example in two days then what is the criteria for the reminder so if you haven't received any reply you haven't heard anything from sam that's when you want a reminder or if sam hasn't clicked or he hasn't opened or regardless you still want a reminder regardless of whatever be the condition so this is an amazing feature because if you want to follow up and see what sam is exactly doing about your email this will really be very helpful this next feature on boomerang is basically going to help you to understand whether you will receive a response for your email or not right so this feature is called boomerang respondable so if you click on boomerang respondable you can see there are different scales over here now based on the email that i have composed it says that it's very unlikely to receive a response and then it gives further explanation on why so if you look at subject length it says that subject length a good subject length should be between two to six words so in terms of subject length it seems very effective when it comes to word count it says that if you want a response, aim for a message length of 50 to 125 words. So this is based on their analysis. They are saying that a good message should have at least 50 to 250 words, right? Question count. So if you want a response to your email, give the recipient a question to answer. Asking one to three questions in your email gives you the best chance of getting a response. So this is also based on their analytics they are saying that at least ask one question in your email if you want to receive a response and the reading level so in terms of the reading level it says that when you write an email write it in such a way that even a third grader can understand what you have written in such cases it's highly likely that you will receive a response there are further scales which are not available at the moment but you can upgrade and you can get access to these these are basically advanced features which speak about how positive your email is how polite you are in the email and what is the subjectivity of your email so as far as my email goes it's highly unlikely that i will receive a response so i have now paraphrased my email and if you look at my email right now it says very likely to receive a response i have also asked the question about the footy game last night so respondable is undoubtedly a very very good tool to understand whether i would receive a response in return for the email that i'm sending out this final feature actually gives you more insights on your own writing style your inbox patterns your productivity and the top contacts you generally communicate with so let's start with your writing style so let's look at your positivity so if you look at my email patterns you see that generally i write very positive emails the next is politeness so if you see i am quite polite with my words when i actually communicate with people subjectivity is basically about the opinions that you put forward so generally in a formal setup it's advisable not to put a lot of opinions forward right so only when it's required it's good to put your opinions forward depending on the position that you're also working on right so here is basically my subjectivity patterns and then reading level so reading level basically explains that what is the average grade level of my email so generally it was it is advisable that the reading level should be somewhere around grade 3 somewhere here but you see most of my emails are around grade 11 or grade 12 the word count is generally advised to be somewhere between 50 and 125 words so pretty much sitting there as you can see and my inbox patterns now moving on to my inbox patterns so you can see that for the last one week i have been receiving almost 40 to 50 emails at an average i would say every day my email checking patterns so you can see that it also shows you that when and on which day at which time did i check my emails on certain days i have even checked my emails as late as 12 in the night whereas mostly it's during 9 to 5 during work time right further on whether i'm a piler filler or achiever based on how i respond to my emails 
finally my send time graph so when i actually send my emails out there's another option that actually shows us that who our top contacts are so you can look into who are those people that you regularly communicate with. why is this important because if we are communicating with them again and again then we can surely look at the second feature in this particular video which was about sending recurring messages so this is something really amazing which i felt and should be used to improve productivity in gmail so guys i hope you liked this particular video please smack the like button smack the subscribe button and share this video with all your friends thank you so much Thank you.